Turn to St. Mark chapter 5. Hallelujah. You are enough. talk long. I just, the Holy Ghost reprogrammed my sermon to Mark 5th chapter. Stand when you get it. I'm going to read from the ESV, the English Standard Version. You probably have the King James, but I want to read the ESV. I'm not going to give too much introduction because I want to get into the word. They came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gerasenes. And when Jesus had stepped out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. I just want to skip down to the fifth verse. Then I'm going to go back after you're seated. Night and day among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always crying out and cutting himself with stones. You can be seated in the presence of God. Amen. Christ all often encountered in his ministry, individuals with unclean spirits. An unclean spirit in the Bible is essentially a demonic spirit. A lot of times we say, cast the devil out, or Satan, the Lord rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Satan, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. But when we say Satan, it's really a euphemism for his legions, for demonic forces. You think about a military, you have a commander in chief. In fact, the President of the United States is the commander, commander in chief of the military. But um, Joe Biden has many troops at his disposal. In fact, he has different branches. He has the Navy, the Army, the Marines, the Air Force, and then you have National Guard. And uh, then you, you have those individuals that are at his exposal. The same thing in the demonic realm. There's not just the devil, but there are demonic forces. So when Jesus would be ministering often, he would encounter these things. And when he, when he went up to Gerasenes, verse 1, he knew, Jesus knew what he was going to encounter. It didn't surprise him. Raise your hand if you understand that Jesus is not surprised. <laughs> He's not <laughs> it's nothing he hasn't seen before. Your situation is nothing he has not seen before. We had an old saying that says, there's nothing too hard for God. Thank you, Jesus. In the second verse, he had, he stepped out of the boat immediately. There met him out of the tombs, a man with unclean spirit. I've talked from this passage before. Um, I was going to teach about the furnace of affliction, Psalms 119. That's where I had been. Headed. I, Bible study on Psalm 119, but I'm not 
put that one on the back burner. Let's go talk about afflictions that we go through. Uh, but at any rate, this man had, he lived, it seems to me he lived in the graveyard. And we were, as we were hearing the ministry and the prophecy, there seemed to have been a demonic force of death and suicide that was trying to uh, affect someone's mind. Could be someone in the room, could be someone in your family. We know that death is in the land with abortion, the spirit of Moloch. And what people don't talk about, they talk about women's rights, and I'm an advocate of women's rights. I, I am. We live in a, a male-dominated society, and of course, male is the head in the church and in the home, but that doesn't mean males are in control even when they messing up. You know, we got these men that even though they are messing up, they make a mess of things, they, 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 we need women's help. Um, and then, particularly the women of color, they always get the short end of the stick. Um, so, um, I, I, I don't have the ability to have a baby, <laughs> biologically, you know, even if I fake like I'm a woman, like transgenderism, if I, if I pretend, I still can't have a baby. Uh, but women, the Lord has blessed them with the reproductive mechanism to be able to have children. And so I can only comment so much on the abortion issue, but just to say that it's, it's a sin according to the word of God. Uh, but what people don't talk about is sexual immorality that leads to abortion. One of the conversations that needs to be had is behaviors that lead to a situation where you have an unplanned pregnancy. Uh, we're not talking about rape. We're not talking about the, the small percentage of rapes and incest that lead to uh, pregnancy. That happens, Amen. but it's often overstated in our society. They, the arguments they make is, well, abortion is necessary because many times, sometimes women are raped, and sometimes you have a situation of uh, abortion where, uh, I'm sorry, uh, incest, you have a situation of incest where abortion is necessary. Uh, but that's a small percentage. By and large, the abortions that are had are from uh, people having a quote, good time and having sex outside of marriage, and uh, they're uh, in, in bed, out of wedlock, and they end up pregnant, pregnant and they uh, terminate the pregnancy. Um, but death is in the land. Uh, but this particular man had an unclean spirit. He lived among, the Bible says in verse three, he lived among the tombs. No one could bind him anymore, not even with the chain. He lived in the graveyard. He lived around death. For he had often been bound with shackles and chains, I'm in verse four, but he wrenched the chains apart. And he broke the shackles in pieces. No one had strength to subdue him. And verse five always breaks my heart. Night and day among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always crying out and cutting himself with stones. That particular verse reminds me so much of our generation. People crying out, people depressed, people addicted, people are in situations that they can't get out of. Oh, how they need the prayers of the saints today. They need our compassion. It's youth out there. They feel like they don't have a choice of suicide. And that suicide spirit is insidious. It will talk to you. It will, it's relentless from what I understand. And it will obsess you. And you come from depression and, and feeling inadequate. This man had got came to a point where he spent a lot of his days crying out. He needed Jesus. Amen. The only solution they had was to put him in chains. Sometimes that's the only solution the world had was to put African Americans and lock them up, put them in prison, put them in jail. They need some intervention. And then they need the saints. They need somebody to love them. Yes. Now I'm not speaking against punishment. You know, you do in, in many cases you do the crime break the law, you have to pay the consequences. But it's a deeper issue. There's, there's these folk out here with mental illness that are serving time. It's not pro properly treated. But not only is it mental, it's spiritual. And they're contemplating uh, taking their own life. But verse 6, when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and fell down before him. That's the solution that these young people need. They need Jesus. We need Jesus in our life today. 
We don't need another talk show. We don't need, talking does help. You know, we're sitting down and not yelling at them and talking to them. I think we need that. And, and in my generation, when I grew up, a whooping was always the solution. <laughs> You can't whoop everything out of people. <laughs> if they don't understand long division, why would they need a whoop? Because the belt was always, the belt was a math teacher, the belt was <laughs> everything, a counselor, the belt was a prayer warrior. <laughs> and we need to go beyond that. We need to be wise. Like I, I was, Madison has a lot of energy and I can't, whoop her every single time, and she too, also. And I have to sit down and see what's going on with her. Why, why is she so agitated? Right. Sometimes you need a pamper, and Madison is a child that doesn't eat a lot, so sometimes she's hungry. And I wonder if I got the belt every time. Then it's gonna, I'm gonna create another issue. That's what's going on with a lot of us <laughs> today. <laughs> we got a whoop and what we need to lay it on. Instead, we, we need to lay it on our hands. Or we needed mama to sit down with us and daddy just to hold our hand. Oh, thank you. That touched me right there. Glory! Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We needed daddy to take us to the park and just walk and talk with us. How many children need that today? So many children just need somebody just to be patient with them. And it ain't easy. It's not going to be an easy conversation. And so I, I point this verse out, and I'm, I'm actually wrapping it up. Uh, I like to point this verse out. Maybe I'll come back to it. This man was so desperate that he lived in the graveyard. He lived in a crack house. He was so desperate. Mm. Crack house in the graveyard. Yes. People go there yes. to die. Yes. 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 People go there to die. Mm. Thank, you. Thank you, Jesus. Death all around there. Yes. And the man in the tomb was just sitting there. That's where he lived. And the Bible said he cried out. How many people are crying out? How many of us are crying out often? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Sometimes we cry out in desperation. Yes. I've been into some tough situations yes. where I say, Lord, I thank you. You're the only, only one that's here for me. Yes. And how many know the Lord will show up? When you're down and out, when you don't feel good about yourself, when you made mistakes, when you just, what am I doing? I do not to do this. Hallelujah. And then you can't hardly tell nobody, but you should. You know, always need somebody to talk to. But it's hard to tell somebody because you know better. You know better. You, what am I doing? You're just crying out. And the Lord will show up because he got you. That's why I like Sister Duce, I mean, Sister Grace. Oh, how he tells me I am his own. That's personal. Amen. Jesus showed up personally for this young man in our scripture, from this man in our scripture. He showed up personally. He made a special trip across the sea for one. Amen. For you, for me. Hallelujah. That's, that's, that's my, my message today. Well, let me read the deliverance part, verse 7. And crying out with a loud voice, he said, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? That is the demonic force speaking through this man in verse 7. I adjure you by God, do not torment me. Amen. Don't torment me. Can you believe that? The demon was talking. It's like the, the ex the movie. Some of y'all won't relate to this, but it's like the old movie, The Exorcist. <laughs> it's from the 80s. That little girl, the devil, the priest showed up. That devil started talking through her. That's real. They must have did their homework on that one. <laughs> that thing, and then if you watch the movie, we used to watch all that old gross stuff. That thing spit like this green slime out of her mouth all over the priest. <laughs> And uh, verse 8, for he was saying to him, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. That's what Jesus was saying. Come out. That's what we were doing today. You got to call these demonic forces out. Listen, put pressure on them. If you got something going on in your home, don't give up. Keep praying for that thing. Stay in that word. Put pressure on them. Put some fasting in it. The devil got to go. He has to go. 
Hallelujah. He can't stand in the presence of God. And uh, the Lord asked him what his name was in verse 9. Jesus asked him, what is your name? He replied, my name is Legion, for we are many. We. So it wasn't just one demonic force, demonic spirit working in this man, but it was many. And the story goes, and I'm going to end with that. The Lord cast those demons into swine. You've heard the story. But it shows you this particular passage in the Bible shows us the nature of demonic forces. The crisis that we have today is not just only mental illness, but it's demonic influence, demonic possession among our youth. Not just the youth, though. There's also demonic influence among, do we have a generation of, of women that men have failed them? I have a friend from high school, and I see it on Facebook. Her and her husband have three children, three boys, three growing boys. I think the oldest one is not no more than 12. The husband is up and left. They were a middle class family. The husband, I don't know if he went with another woman, but my goodness, it's left hanging. That's the generation we live in. People are selfish. Wasn't he thinking about, I don't know the whole situation, but wasn't he thinking about his family? Wasn't he thinking about, you know, what, what, uh, how that would affect the children? Yeah. So we have the, the devil, the devil will work in that and bring about depression and so forth. Praise the Lord. I'm going to end right there because the time is far spent. God bless you. We've, we've already said a prayer, but I just ask the Lord just to bless this message. Uh, let it go forth into the highways and the hedges. Let it affect us and bless us and let us take this with us. In Jesus' name, Lord, I pray again for, for Madison. I hear her in the background, Lord, that you would give her peace. Everybody stretch their hand towards Madison. Amen. To the listening audience, I have a two-year-old. The Lord bless me with a two-year-old and with a lot of energy. And uh, we're going to keep loving on Madison. We pray right now that she will have peace in her heart. Uh, hallelujah. We're going to rejoice when soon in the near future she's going to sit down and, and rejoice with us. Hallelujah. We just bless you right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I believe he brought me this car. We're gonna sing sing one verse of this. I don't I don't feel no waste time. I come too far. I come too far. At the road. I don't believe. Is far to me. Praise the Lord. I just want to make a few announcements. Um, we had to push the, the picnic back a week um, so we can get the right shelter. Um, so it's the 20, uh, July the 24th. So it's that fourth Sunday. So mark your calendar. I think we were saying the third Sunday, but the fourth Sunday. And Sister Wiles is in charge of that. So she's coordinating everything. See her if you have any questions. July the 24th, we're going to meet. Let's meet at 10 o'clock so we can have plenty of time. Let's meet at Clipper Park at 10 o'clock. I am going to text uh, everybody direct to uh, the address. It's in Colerain Township. Um, you can get there. Uh, off of uh, Springdale Road, go down Coleraine, turn on Springdale Road, you can get there that way. But it's in Coleraine Township. It's called Clipper Park. We're meeting at 10 a.m. And we're just gonna have a, sh a short little service. They have like a noise ordinance so we, so we can bring the sound instruments, the sound uh, equipment, but we're gonna make a joyful noise nevertheless. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, and then we have a special day on the second Sunday in August. I believe we're going to have to do an afternoon service at 4 o'clock. We have Deacon Chris Freely. He's going to do his trial sermon. Amen. He's going to do his initial sermon. I don't like to use the word trial. 
but he's going and this is me and broadcast. I'm recording this on purpose, so all of you can be here and hear this young man go forth. I know the Lord's going to anoint him. He already is anointed. Um, so that's the second Sunday in August at 4 o'clock. I'm going to get the word out. We were going to have it this month, but I didn't get the advertisement out like I wanted, so he was okay when we pushed it back. Um, and then lastly, sometime in August, in the near future, I want to do another Friends and Family Day. I notice that our membership is dwindling, and so we're going to do a, a, a Friends and Family slash home going. I'm going to see if I can get old members to come back and everything. So you that are listening, come on back to church. Hey, Amen. So let's stand to our feet. That's all I want to do. Hey, Amen. Uplift another your right hand. Repeat after me. May the Lord watch. Between me and thee, while we're absent, one from another, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Shake somebody's hand, tell them you love them. Praise the Lord. Uh, we have the pans out for the offering. Amen. <laughs> 